Good evening. Glad to have you here tonight at Vacation Bible School, and we're glad to have the people that are watching online, and we welcome you, and hope you'll be inviting your friends, and you know, the ones that are here, and the ones that are watching online can watch over and over and over again. So, as we think about our lessons this week, tonight's color in the wordless book is red. What, what does red stand for? Does anybody know? Can you tell me what red stands for? What does it stand for? Blood. Okay, the Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And uh, he's given the blood for the atonement of their souls. In other words, that's the only thing that can wash our sins away is the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed, with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Jesus Christ died for us so that our sins can be forgiven and we can have a home in heaven. So let's have a word of prayer and ask God's blessing on the meeting tonight. Father, we thank you for your great love for us, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Father, we pray for anyone here tonight who has never received Christ, for anyone listening to us who has never received Christ, that this might be the very night that they would come to trust you. We thank you for sending your Son to shed his blood for us, that we might have the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for your love, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I think it's time to start singing. Right, good evening again. I'm going to ask you to stand up and sing out. By now you should know it without even looking, but let's try it. I want you to really sing out on this part. The best place we could be. Miss Jean will go through it twice. All right, let's sing it out. We're glad to be here at Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School. We're glad to be here at Vacation Bible School. It's the best. That means 
means he wrote it. He used men to write it down. And why do we sometimes call it a treasure? Because it is... Um, it is um, starts with a V. It's... Book divine. It is book divine, but it's... What is a treasure? If you found a treasure, you, you think you found something very... Special. Special. Valuable. Valuable. It means it's worth a whole bunch. Who can tell me what makes this valuable? Because um, that's how um, Jesus talks to you. Oh my goodness, that's exactly what it is. That's how Jesus talks to you. And he tells us all kinds of things. The most important thing he tells us, some of the most important things, where did you come from? Who made you? Where are you going to go when your soul that God gave you, when your body dies and your soul's going to live somewhere forever? The Bible tells us all that. And here at Vacation Bible Schools, you have been hearing exciting stories. Last night... And the night before, Miss Jenny gave us very exciting stories right out of the Word of God. She's been using uh, special colors to help us, and it's called the Wordless Book. And it has special colors. Who remembers what the very first color is? Gold. 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 And why did they use gold to start with? Why did this person, Bronson? It's like the golds of it. Heaven streets. Because the Bible tells us something about heaven. Not a whole lot, but some special things. And one of the things it says is that we will walk on streets of gold. What does that Bible verse that we learned tell us about heaven? Jesus said, In my Father's house are many I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again. Guess what? That's a promise. That's another thing that's in God's Word. Lots of promises. He promised to come back and take boys and girls and men and women that are Christians to heaven. So that was the first night. Second night, which was last night, we talked about another color. And what was that color? Black. And what does the black remind us of? A sin. And who has sinned? The devil. Well, the devil Everybody. wants us to sin, but who has sinned? Everybody. And how do you know that? Not just because I said it. The Bible. The Bible says. Anybody remember where the Bible says that? Romans. Romans. Exactly. Can anybody say it before I show it? Yeah. Okay, Brandon. Romans three twenty three. Girl, I've sinned against your glory, God. Addison. Or Addison. I know you're Addison. Adrian, can you say it? Romans three twenty three. We'll all have sinned and, and come short of the glory of God. Good job, Evie. For all, for all, all, all right, great. Let's all say it together. Romans 3.23 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 I wonder if Sparky will remember it. He's got a new one to learn tonight. All right, last night we sang a song that included a verse that most all of you know from Wednesday night, right? You all know John 3.16? All right, we start our song with this part. Okay, with this part. I have it backwards. We usually read left or right, don't we? All right, go ahead. Ready? For when she talked about what God had to do because Adam and Eve sinned. Sin. What did God have um, to do? Um, Kill the lamb. And he let us know that in order to have our sins forgiven, blood had to be shed. Now, do we do we kill animals today? No. no, because the final lamb died. And who was that? 
Jesus. Jesus, and he shed his blood. This is another song that we're going to sing. It's about the blood of Jesus, but your verse tonight is, The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. So that tells us that's another treasure in God's word, what we can do to have our sins, our hearts cleansed. Yes, Elijah. Um, um, how does um, God the man? How's God? He's not the lamb. That little lamb you saw last night was a real lamb, but he, we just called him the lamb because like the lamb had to shed his blood, when Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood. And so he's like the lamb. He's, we, and so even God called him the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Okay? So the, the red stands for Jesus... Blood. I guess, of course, well, some of the songs we sing down here are just little choruses. They're kind of fun songs. They're action songs. But some songs we sim sing are actually hymns. And this is in our hymn book upstairs. I think it's still in our hymn book, isn't it? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this song looks pretty old, doesn't it? <laughs> it is. But guess what? So is the Bible. And it, it still means the same things it did many years ago when it was first printed. So let's stand up. I bet some of you know this from church. It's a question. Move the Bible. What can Something that they will like. Something know. that will trick them. But what's the word besides trick that we learn? Um, what's the other word? If I can find the words. What's the other word that we learn that trick means? In Tice. Is it in that book right there behind that? No. Well, that word is, but I typed up some new ones today. Okay, so entice means to do what? Trick. To trick. So let's see if we can remember that song. It's, um, if sinners trick you, but that's not what it says. What does it say? If, if sinners entice you, don't give in, say no, no, no. If sinners entice you, don't give in, say no, no, no. Say no to your who wants you to say no to the devil who wants to if sinners in don't give in say no 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 okay stand up if sinners don't give in say no means what? In charge. In charge. Okay, that's good. It means in charge. It means to have the right to be in charge. Okay? How many of you have heard the word authority before? Alright. Who, who do you think is the, who do you have, think has the most authority over you or the right to tell you what to do? God. You're exactly right. And you know why God has authority? Because he made, not just because he's powerful, he made you, he made, yeah, but he made you. And guess what? He knows what's best for you, but he has the right, since you belong to him, to tell you what to do. So 
uh, the word authority means to be have the right to uh, give uh, an order or give a command or to expect and to expect people to obey. So besides God, who else has authority over you? Our parents. Why? Because God put them in charge of them. Exactly. God put your parents in charge of you, and so they are the person in your life that has the right to tell you what to do and to expect you to do it. Who else might have authority over you? Let me ask you this. If you're older than somebody else, does that mean you should have authority over them? No? Uh, you know what? I'm older than Pastor Mike. Just a little tiny bit, but I'm older than he is. But guess what? He can have. He has authority over me. Do you know why? Anybody know why? Because well, he's a preacher. He's the pastor. The Bible says that we're supposed to listen to our leaders in our church, and he's my leader. He's the leader of our church, and so he has authority over some things in our lives. Okay, who else might have authority or the right to tell you what to do? You have authority. I'm over. <laughs> okay. Now, why the why would the the teacher have authority over you? You're right; they do. They should, because guess what? When your parents put you in someone's class or at school, your parents are really saying, "I want you to be the authority in their life today." Was it your Sunday school teacher? What about a babysitter? Do they have authority? Yeah, anybody that's in charge of you. And so, you know what? God has authority to tell us what to do. And in his word, he tells us if we'll listen to those leaders and obey that authority, we'll be happy. There's a song we sing around here. It's called Trust and Obey. We're not going to sing that tonight. But if we trust and obey, there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Aren't you happier at home when you obey? Not a lot of happiness at home when we have kids that are constantly disobeying, right? Yeah. So tonight we're going to sing obedience because guess what? That's what's expected out of you. Obedience is. So stand up. We sing that on Wednesday night all the time. Ready? Obedience is the very best way to show that you Sing it. Doing exactly what the Lord does. Sparky has a new verse for you. You might get to jump on him because your verse is about the blood. Okay, Miss Debbie, are you ready? Welcome back, boys and girls here at church and at home. We're so glad that you all are here and we hope you're having a good time. We've been having a good time this week. Yes. Yes. Well, maybe we ought to check on Sparky. To see what he's been up today. Sparky? We know you're back there. Are you there, Sparky? <laughs> Hello! Can't you ask a puppy? <laughs> oh, he's, he's stuck. Yeah, let's get his tail out. Okay. <laughs> no, Bobby. Oh, oh Miss Debbie! Oh, I didn't hear you come in. I was so tired. I mean, I just, I just need to close my eyes, and I guess I, I fell asleep. What, well, Sparky? Why are you so tired? Did you have a busy day? Well, I sure did. I played with my bestest friend Ralphie, and we played dragons and trolls. Oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> First. I was a dragon, 
and Ralphie was the troll. And, 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 and then I was the troll, and Ralphie was the dragon. <laughs> wait, wait, it gets better. And then I was the dragon, and Ralphie, he uh, was the... Sparky, I think I get the picture. You and Ralphie took turns playing the dragon or the troll, and it sounds like you had a fun but busy day. Yeah. <laughs> I sure did. And, and even when my mommy wanted me to take a rest, well, I just I just couldn't quit thinking about playing dragons and trolls. So so you know what? I never took a nap or rested or nothing. And now I'm so tired. Oh, oh I can yeah. see that. Do you feel up to learning a new memory verse? I mean, if you don't. You can go back down and go back to sleep. I'll just teach it to the boys and girls. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. I, I'm waiting. Now, now, I really want to learn new memory verse. In fact, I've been practicing and practicing the verse you taught me on Monday and Tuesday. Let me tell you, I'm getting really good on them. Well, Sparky, would you like to say Monday's verse for me? It starts out, Jesus said... I know, Miss Debbie... And yeah, I can say it. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again. Ha, bet you didn't think I could do it, did oh, you? I'm really impressed, Sparky. <laughs> I did think that since it had been two days since you learned the memory verse for Monday, that you might not have remembered it at all, but you did an excellent job. How about last night's verse? Do you remember it? Oh, yeah, sure do. For all has... Uh, uh, Sparky, you forgot the bread for the sandwich? Romans 3.23? Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. How, how could I forget that yummy bread? Oh, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. How's that? Another excellent job, Sparky. Yep. Now, are you ready for tonight's memory verse? Oh, I sure am. But, but Miss Debbie, can I, can I ask you a question first? Well, sure, Sparky. What's your question? Well, why doesn't Monday night's memory verse, why doesn't it have any bread? Oh, Sparky, that's a really good question. And the answer is, I forgot to tell you what the bread was. Maybe I should do that right now. Oh, yes, please. Okay. Gotta have my bread. Okay, the bread for Monday night's memory verse is, wait a second, I've got boys talking, you can't help it. John 14, 2 through 3, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again. John 14, verses 2 and 3. I'm so sorry I forgot to put the bread on the memory verse. I'll try to do better, Sparky. Oh, that's okay. I mean, you know, everybody makes mistakes, so, you know, I'll forgive you. Well, thank you, Sparky. Now, are you ready for tonight's memory verse? Uh... Sure. Okie doke. Night memory verse. Okay. Tonight's memory verse is found in the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 7. And this is how we say it. 1 John 1, 7. That's the bread. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ is. His Son, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. Miss Debbie, that's an awful lot of words. Do I have to learn them all? <laughs> oh, no, Sparky. We're only going to learn part of the Bible first. This is the part we're going to learn. First, now listen, boys and girls, so you can learn it. 1 John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. Now, Sparky, do you remember how last night that we learned that all have sinned? And you remember that all means everybody? Well, sure. I remember that. All means me and her and him 
and him and her, That's right. and her and Sparky. Did you know <clears throat> that God can't allow sin in heaven? Did you know that? But he really wants everyone to live with him in heaven. So he made a way for us to go. And that way is Jesus. And the memory verse for tonight says, The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. Jesus paid for <coughs> my sin and the boys and girls here in the room, their sin, and the boys and girls at home, their sin, and the mommies and the daddies and the grown-ups that are here in the room, he paid for their sins, and he paid for the boys or the mommies and the daddies and the grown-ups that are listening at home, he paid for their sins. He paid for everyone's sins. And so that we could go to heaven. <coughs> no way. So, so if Jesus paid for all the sins for everybody, then everybody gets to go to heaven, right? No, Sparky. Not everyone's going to get to go to heaven. Everyone can go to heaven if they believe that Jesus paid for their sin and if they tell Jesus that they're sorry that they're a sinner and they ask him to forgive them of their sin, then one day they can go to heaven and live with him. Hmm. So, let's see here. I guess tonight's memory verse is just a really super duper important verse, huh? It's one of the most important verses in the Bible, Sparky. A lot of people think they can go to heaven by being good or by doing other things, but the only true way to go to heaven is believing that the blood of Jesus, God's Son, will clean, clean away or cleanse away all their sin. Now, are you ready to learn the memory verse? Oh, I sure am, Miss Debbie. Hey, hey, how's it go again? Okay, listen up, boys and girls. If you can't listen, you can, we'll take you out of the room, okay? First John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. First John 1, 7. I'll tell you what, boys and girls. Maybe you can help me say the verse, and that will help Sparky to learn it. So can you help me say it? Yeah. First John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. First John 1, 7. Wow, that was pretty good. But I think we can do better. I mean, it was not very loud. How about you, Sparky? Do you think you can do better than the boys and girls? Well, of course I know I can. I mean, I'm a dragon. Here, here. I, I can do it. Okay, Sparky, let's hear you say the memory verse. And don't you forget the bread. Oh, I won't, Miss Debbie. Here goes. First John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think here. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh -huh. His son. Um... Uh, cleanses us from, oh, oh yeah, all sin. First John 1, 7. Why, wow, Sparky, I can't believe you did that on the very first try. And you did a really good job. I know. I'm really smart, aren't I? <laughs> well, it seems like you're smart, but maybe we could try it again with all the boys and girls. Would you like to help me, Sparky? Oh, oh yeah, Miss Debbie. Here we go, Sparky. Yes, Miss Debbie? I was going to say, let's say it three times so we can get it in our head, okay? Oh, oh yeah, 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 okay. Okay. Here we go. The blood, first, oh, first John, one, seven. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. First John, one, seven. That's the first time. Second time. First John, one, seven. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. This is the last time. 1 John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. Oh my, 
I'm really impressed, boys and girls, and Sparky, you've done an excellent job. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize it was so late. We need to get finished up here so you can go to Miss Jenny's class. Oh, yeah. I love going to Miss Jenny's class. I know you do, Sparky. <laughs> but don't you forget, you have to sit still. No wiggling, no squirming, and no talking out. Oh, ow, ow. I remember, Miss Debbie. I'll listen real good. Wonderful, Sparky. I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye, Sparky. Bye, Miss Debbie. See you boys and girls in a few Bye. minutes in Miss Jenny's class. Woo! Okay. Come on, take a little nap. <laughs> It's beginning to look a lot like wow. Christmas. It's not Christmas time. What? It's not Christmas time? No. Well, what, what do we have here? I see Christmas decorations. It's not Christmas time yet? No. Oh, no. no. I think I got the wrong memo. All right. No, no, you all look like you're dressed for summertime, not for Christmas time. That's what you're dressed at Christmas. Well, I guess we have to wait and see why this is out here. Uh, but first, we're going to start with where we left off yesterday. Who were our first man and woman? Adam, Do you remember? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. And they were sent out of the garden. Raise your hand if you can tell me why they were sent out of the Garden of Eden, that beautiful, perfect place. John Lee, I saw your hand first. What did they do? Um, they ate the fruit of good and evil. Right. They ate the fruit that God said, Do not eat of the fruit, or you will die. And they ate of it, and they had to leave the garden. Now, I did not tell you something yesterday. I didn't tell you the good news. When God, right before God sent them out of the Garden of Eden, God told them that he would send someone to save them, to redeem them, who would come and be their savior, to take care of their sin. Remember I told you that God killed a lamb? Well, God was going to send someone to take care of their sin. And so for years, the people were waiting for a savior, for, for a redeemer, for the promised one. They didn't know what his name was going to be. He was going to be the promised one. And we call that, there's two words for the promised one. One is Messiah. Have you ever heard the word Messiah? Have you heard that? And Christ. Have you heard the word Christ? Never. Those two words both mean the promised one. And so Adam and Eve were waiting. They thought maybe one of their children would be the promised one that God said would come. None of their children were the promised one. And there were more and more people born, and years and years went by, and Abraham came, and God promised Abraham that one of his great great grandchildren would be the promised one. And several prophets in the Bible talked about the promised one. A prophet is just someone who speaks the word of God. All right, so we've got two, three words here. Messiah, Christ, means the promised one. I only heard Christ before. You've heard of that. Sure you have. But not Messiah. They both mean the exact same thing. They're just in different languages. All right, and a prophet is someone who gives God's message. And the prophets came through every few hundred years and would tell the people, promised one is coming. The promised one is going to be born in Bethlehem. Or the promised one is going to be bruised and crucified. All these predictions were told, but the people were waiting and waiting for that promised one. And finally, many, many, many years after Adam and Eve, out on a hillside outside of Bethlehem, there were some shepherds out watching their sheep. So I want you to pretend that you're a shepherd you're sitting around every when you get off their chair and sit around the campfire and you're just kind of staying awake so you can watch your sheep and yeah, you're trying to stay awake. You're watching your sheep. It's a quiet night. Maybe it's a little chilly. Maybe you're looking at the beautiful stars outside. And all of a sudden, you just stay there. An angel came and said, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. A Savior, which is Christ the Lord, the promised one. For this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
And so the shepherds, they got up. You can go back to your chair. The shepherds got up and they headed to Bethlehem to find this promised one. They didn't know what the promised one's name was going to be, but they knew it was going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Now, what is a manger? Where would the baby be? Brandon, what is a manger? It's where um, the animals eat. Yes, this little, this little thing here would be a manger. It's where you put the food for your sheep or for your cows. All right. It's not a soft bed. And it's not a real bed. It's not a real soft bed or anything. It's, it's where you put food. And they were going to find, the shepherds were going to find a baby in the manger. What? And this would be the promised one. So the shepherds, they looked around, they got to Bethlehem, and they found the stable where Jesus was. Oh, here's first of all, I, I didn't show you the angels. The angels came and told the shepherds, go to Bethlehem, find the baby. And they did. And, they have wings. and then, uh, those angels did not have wings. We don't know if they did or not. Some angels do have wings. And they went to the stable, they found the baby, and they found the mother of the baby, whose name was Mary. Mary. And they found the foster dad, who was Joseph. And did the shepherds fall down and worship Mary and Joseph? No, they didn't worship Mary and Joseph. They worshiped the baby because the angel said, this is the promised one. This baby was Jesus. Have you heard that name? Yes. Don't worry about him. So Jesus was born one night, but, you know, he wasn't, that's not when Jesus began. Before that, where was Jesus? Jesus was in heaven because Jesus is God. But God, he's, Jesus is just the, the body um, of, of God, the man part that you can see. God, the Father, is a spirit. You don't, you don't, he doesn't look like a person. So Jesus came to earth. He was God. He wasn't just all of a sudden born. He had been in heaven. He came to earth as a man. When he was in heaven, that was not... That was not his beginning. He never had a beginning. He's just like God the Father. He's always been. When the earth was created, Jesus created the earth with God the Father. So he created the earth and then later came to earth as a baby. Now, um, he grew up, but he was different than other boys and girls. He grew up. He had brothers and sisters. He had Mary as his mother. He had Joseph as his father. But he was different than other boys and girls. He looked like other boys and girls. But what was different about him, do you think? What do you think, Evander? You know. He could do miracles. And Not, he, well, he probably could. But there's he something else. Yeah, he had been to heaven where no one else had been to heaven. But do you think when he got mad at his, or do you think he got mad at his brothers? And do you think when Mary said, oh, Jesus, would you please pick up the garbage here and take that out? Do you think he got mad? No. No. So, because why? Because he can't. Right, because he is God. He did not sin. Re remember yesterday we learned that all of us are sinners? Yeah. One, because we were born sinners. Yeah, all can't sin. And two, because we choose to sin. We all choose to sin. And Jesus, he was perfect. So he was different than all the other boys and girls. Now, as he grew older, um, he when he turned 30... He started to do miracles. He started his ministry for other people to see. Now, a miracle is just something that only God can do. A miracle is not something that um, is just a trick. It's not magic. It's just something that only God can do. How's that Elijah? Uh, 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 you want to think of it a minute? All right. You think of it. All right. A miracle... It's not a trick. Now, I didn't do this on purpose, but I put a magnet there on this side, all right? It's almost like a trick, you know? It's, it doesn't have a magnet on the outside. That's not a miracle, okay? That's just like a trick. Miracles are something that only God can do. And only God is okay. omnipotent. He's, um, he has all power. He's, um, he has unbeatable power, and only God has that. And Jesus was showing that he was God by he was by doing miracles. So some of the miracles that Jesus did, you probably know several of his miracles. What's this miracle here? 
um, someone with, does raise your hand. Mary, what's what's this boy giving to Jesus? Fish. He's giving his lunch, his fish and, and bread. And Jesus was able to take that one little lunch and multiply it to feed a whole crowd of people, 5,000 people. He, he did a miracle. Only God could make that little bit of a lunch into a huge lunch for everybody. And he did some other miracles. What do you think he did for this man who's lying on the ground and can't walk? Um, um, Elijah. Make him legs. He made him strong legs. His legs were weak. God made him walk. He also made the blind to see. And he made the deaf to hear. He opened the tongue for people who couldn't make talking sounds. They just could make grunts. They couldn't talk. He made them able to talk. Maybe, or maybe they had trouble with their tongue. He did other miracles on the water. You probably know some of these too. On the, on the stormy sea. When he and the disciples were in the boat, what did he tell the wind and the waves? He said, peace, peace, peace be still. Peace. And Jesus had power over the wind and the waves because he wasn't just a man who grew up in Mary and Joseph's family. He was God, and he was showing that he could do miracles because he was God. And one time he also walked on the water. Have you ever tried to do that? Yeah. Walk on the water? I don't know. It doesn't work, does it? Does it? No, let's not have our stories now. He was able to walk on the water because he was God, and he was able to go to the disciples' boat and be with them. And another time, he raised a man who was dead, and he made Lazarus come forth out of the grave. And that was another miracle. Well, you would think, you would think that with all these miracles that Jesus did, that he would be everyone's favorite person. Yeah, he is. But he wasn't. He wasn't. There were many people who hated Jesus. Some of the church leaders, they did not like Jesus. They did not believe that he was God. And they were determined to get rid of Jesus. They did not like everybody following Jesus and, and worshiping Jesus and trusting in Jesus. And, and they, they were sure that this was bad and they wanted to get rid of Jesus. And so one night, they did. They took Jesus and they, they brought him to a home and they started to... Um, they started to question him, and he tried to bring some accusers before him. And the accusers had lies, and they said, you know, Jesus did this. I saw Jesus do that. And all these accusers were making up stories about Jesus that weren't true. And their stories didn't agree. They couldn't find witnesses that would agree. And finally, they decided that Jesus was guilty of claiming to be God, which he was. He was God, right? Yeah. And they said... That's terrible. That's blasphemy. He said he's God, and he's just a man. We know he's Mary and Joseph's son. He's just a man. He can't be God. And so when morning came, they brought him before the Roman governor. Now, the church leaders, they could maybe give him some punishment, but they could not put him to death. They wanted Jesus put to death. And so they had to bring him to the Roman governor, whose name was Pilate. And Pilate, he talked to Jesus. And Pilate, he asked Jesus all these questions, and Jesus wouldn't answer anything. And finally Pilate said, I don't think he's guilty of anything. He's, he hasn't done any murder or stealing anything. He's harmless. And the people, the church leaders, were so angry, they wanted Jesus put to death. And so finally Pilate said, all right, well, why don't you just take Jesus? Take, well, I'll have my soldiers whip him. They'll beat him, and then he was hoping that they would just forget about Jesus and let him go. So the soldiers took Jesus, and they beat him, and they beat him, and they, they took his clothes off of him and put on a purple robe, or a scarlet robe, the Bible says, to make him look like he was the king. They said, you say you're the king here, wear this robe. And then they took some thorns, and they wound them together to make a crown. And they, that's right, they put it on his head. And they beat it down on his head so those thorns were on his head. And they said, there's your crown. And they were mocking him. And they gave him a little reed, a stick, and said, there's your scepter. And they, they teased him and made fun of him and laughed at him. And they spit on him. They spit on him. They pulled his beard. That's right. They did all those things. They, they were... Oh, um, little Jesus. Yes, well, he wasn't, remember, he wasn't, he wasn't really poor or weak. 
He could have just said, and they all would have died, or he could have just said, be dead, or, you know, he could have said well, anything. Not, not he, or he could have just gone up to heaven. He could have done anything. But, he just say but remember, Jesus is going to be the sacrifice. Just like that yes. lamb yesterday we talked about who sacrificed his life to shed the blood. Jesus is going to be a sacrifice. And that was his choice. He was willing to do to be the sacrifice. Yeah. So after they had beat his back, and this picture doesn't really show um, very bloody, but um, after they beat him and put the robe on him and the crown, they brought him back to Pilate. And Pilate, he wanted to let him free after that. Pilate could see no reason for him to be put to death. But it was a special holiday season. It was the Passover. And it was a time when usually the governor would let one of the prisoners go free. So he said to the Jews who were out here wanting um, Jesus to be put to death, he said, it's the season where I let one prisoner go free. Why don't you let me let Jesus go free? And they said, no, we don't want Jesus. We want Barabbas. And Barabbas was a murderer and a thief. He was wicked. He was. Barabbas was someone who was in prison. And they're saying, give us Barabbas. We don't want Jesus. Crucify Jesus. Give us Barabbas. And Pilate said, I don't find Jesus guilty of anything. And so he, he took a bowl of water. He washed his hands. And he said, he's innocent. I will not have his blood on my hands. I don't think he's guilty. And that was kind of showing... How that he that that he did not want to be responsible for Jesus' death, but the people said, "Let his blood be on us. We'll be responsible for his death. We don't want Barabbas. We want Jesus crucified." So that let me death. tell you, yes, that means death, but it means crucified means a special kind of death. It means a death on a cross. Yes, it was a Roman form of punishment for those who were the wickedest, the worst that you can imagine. They said, crucify him. They didn't say, just let him die. They said, crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate said, do with him what you want. And he let Barabbas go free. Well, it was still early morning. They had Jesus had been like in trial with the church people all night. Then he had been with Pilate in the morning. And it's still morning time. And they took Jesus and they took two other bad, I shouldn't say two other, they took two bad men, two thieves and, and um, murderers, robbers, and they crucified the three of them together. Jesus in the middle and the two thieves on the side. Why now, the, the, two, the two thieves deserved to, to be punished, didn't Not they? Yet. But Jesus was a sacrifice. It was his willing choice to be there on the cross. Now, um, while they were there on the cross... At noon, at 12 o'clock noon, it all of a sudden went dark. The sun was covered. It was all dark. And it was dark for three hours. And at noon, also, it started. the earth started to rumble. And people, I'm sure, began to wonder, what is going on? Well, this was the time when all the sin of the world was put on Jesus. All of our sin was put on Jesus. And he was innocent. He had done nothing. He did nothing wrong, but he took. Every, he knew what everyone was going to do. And he took their sin. And God the Father, his Father, turned his back on him. And so for those three hours, he was pitch black. Well, well, is God, well God, God the Father is in heaven. And God had turned his back on, on his own son, on Jesus. And for those three hours, no one saw anything. It was dark. And then, after those three hours, at three o'clock, Jesus said, It is finished. And it was done. And he gave up the ghost and he died. Now, at that time, there was a guard standing beside him. A centurion Roman guard. And the guard said, Surely this was the Son of God. This is not this is not a typical murderer or a thief like I usually put on the cross. This one was the Son of God. Well, at three o'clock, 
Jesus had already died. He said it was finished, and he died. He gave up his, yeah, his life. Wanted... He gave up his life willingly. And then the guards came around. They wanted to be done. They wanted to take the bodies down, and um, they decided they were going to make sure everybody was dead. So the guards went by the um, thieves, and the first thief, he was still alive, so they broke his legs so he would die quickly. Ow. And they went to the other thief, they broke his legs because he was still alive, they wanted him to die quickly. Well, Jesus was already dead, so they didn't want to break his legs. They said, he's already dead, we don't need to break his legs, but let's just make sure. So they took a spear and they put a spear through his side and just made sure that Jesus was dead. But he had already died, he had already given up his life. What is a spot? A spot, a spear, a sign? Yeah. They took a spear and put it in his side. And then they come down the other side? Well, I don't think they went all the way through. Oh. But just like the lamb, remember, he was not guilty. Mm -hmm. He did nothing wrong. He, he had shed his blood. Jesus we call the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Um, that's why in heaven they talk about the Lamb being in heaven. Um, Jesus is the Lamb. He was the sacrifice for our sin. Now, are there any questions? I make sure there are questions and not a story. Ronza? So why is the darkness? Oh, yes. Why the darkness? That was just a miracle that God did. God caused the darkness for just maybe because he didn't want everyone to have to watch Jesus. Yes. Evander? How were those two other guys alive? And why did How, Why were they still alive on the cross? Yeah. The, the cross was, was painful, you know, poking you through your arms and, and feet, but it doesn't kill you until mm -hmm. you, until you get too weak to be able to breathe. So, and Santa, e, you, uh, wait, 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 gonna, Theo's turn. Um, he blood. He shed gushing blood. Yes, he shed his blood. He's a gushing blood. Gushing blood, yes, yeah. he did. His blood was shed freely for us. All right, yeah, now, that's free. just review. Freely means um, you don't have to pay for it. You can have salvation for free. That's what I mean. I just lost an eyeball. Now, yeah. <laughs> I'm a good doctor. All right, let's review a little bit. We started with who is the promised one? Jesus. Jesus, that's right. And let's talk about some of the miracles he did. What was one of the miracles he did? Um, Mary, go ahead. He fed the people, he fed the crowds. All right, and then. Can you think of any, does this give you, of course there should be two eyeballs here, the other eyeballs in my hand. Oh. Elijah, what does this remind you of? Any miracles? Why are there two eyeballs? He's walking um, on the water. Jesus walking on the water. And Here's the stormy sea. And one moment, Elijah. How about one other miracle with the stormy sea? There's two. One, he walked on water, and the other one, he said, what, Bronson, you told me you're a miracle. He, he said, be peace be still, and the wind and the waves stopped. And the two eyeballs remind us that he made the blind to see. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Wait, since there's one eyeball gone, I look like blind. Well, he looks like he's still blind, but he's not. All right. So, boys and girls, Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sin. <coughs> but there will be a time in your life when you will feel like the Lord is saying to you, are you going to accept me? Are you going to believe that I died for you? Or are you going to reject me and go your own way? Are you going to follow me and... And uh, try, are you going to follow me? There will be a time when you will feel like you have to decide. And that's when I hope you say, Lord, yes, I accept you as my Savior. I want, I want to, to be your child. I want to have you be the payment for my sin. If you want to try to pay for your own sin, God will let you do that. If you reject him and say, no, I don't want your payment. I want to make my own payment. You, that, that means you'll be separated from God forever. You cannot go to heaven with your own sin. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. You know, if I tried to die for you, I couldn't pay for your sin with my blood because I'm not perfect. Yeah. Jesus is the only one who can pay for your sin. He's the only one. And his, and his um, salvation is free. His blood was freely given. All right? Any questions? No, no. Question to you, and then we'll be done. Um, um, what, 
in the water. And why is he yes, why did he wash his hands in the water? Because Pilate said, I don't think Jesus is guilty. I'm going to wash my hands of this matter. He's not guilty. All right, let's pray, and then we'll go. I'll give you announcements of what we'll do next. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the payment that you gave, um, shedding your blood for us. Um, Lord, we, we don't deserve it. There's nothing that we can do to deserve it. And I just pray that you would help us to be clear to each boy and girl. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. This is in regards to the Wednesday craft that you're going to be doing. We are having these crosses that are pillable. The Wednesday lesson was about the birth and death of Jesus. So we have the cross to represent that because the cross represents Jesus. It has the instructions on the front of the bag that you get in your packet. You'll just peel off the yellow part, lay it down flat, and then you also have beads, uh, noodles, beans, different stuff, foam stickers that you can place on it. And we'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna take the heart that was in here. It's a purple heart. They have a sticky piece on the back that you peel. Just like that. And then you can lay it anywhere on here that you want. I'm going straight for the middle of the cross. Then say I want to put some beads on it. I got a couple of pink beads here. And then you stick them down. And they hold. So you don't have to worry about them coming off. If you do get concerned about them falling off, you can use the Elmer's white glue and glue them on there specifically. But this is just an object to show you how it's done. When it's completed, it should look something similar to this. Um, Naturally, yours will not be identical to this. You'll have your own desires of designs that you want to do, or just any randomness. But it's not, they don't have to be perfect. But this is your Wednesday lesson for your craft.